Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, United Technologies and Sikorsky to be separated. Let the power of ANN work for you. Is Boeing replacing the 757? I'm Bree Cross, it is June 16th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. We've been reporting about the possibility of United Technologies and Sikorsky separating, and here's a follow-up. United Technologies will pursue the separation of the Sikorsky aircraft business from United Technologies, subject to final board approval. A decision on whether Sikorsky will be spun off or sold is expected by the end of the third quarter. Gregory Hayes, UTC President and Chief Executive Officer, issued a statement that said in part, quote, Sikorsky is the world's premier helicopter company and through a series of strategic wins is well positioned for long-term growth. However, the separation of Sikorsky from the portfolio will allow both United Technologies and Sikorsky to better focus on their core businesses. Over the coming weeks, we'll determine whether a spin-off or direct sale is the best way to enhance Sikorsky's long-term success and create the most value for customers and shareholders." End quote. ANN will keep you posted on further developments. If you are an individual or a company who intends to market a new product or service at EAA AirVenture 2015, this message is for you. The staff of the Aero News Network and the Experimental Aircraft Association are pleased to announce the debut of the AirVenture Innovation Preview for AirVenture 2015, otherwise known as the AIP. The AIP is a massive news teaser, an invitation to build serious buzz and promote all the amazing innovations that make AirVenture one of the most outstanding examples of ingenuity and aero entrepreneurialism. On the Saturday preceding AirVenture 2015, a number of carefully screened companies will have the chance to participate in an expertly produced online news program produced by Aero TV and in cooperation with EAA. This program will wet the whistle of the aviation population with 20 to 30 short, 3 to 5 minute online multimedia presentations, offering a glimpse into what will be really new at AirVenture this year. The program will be distributed by EAA, ANN, Aero TV, and others yet to be named, and will be made available to a number of media outlets for distribution in the hours before the advent of AirVenture 2015. We're aiming at building greater anticipation, buzz, and to further cement AirVenture as the center point of aviation innovation in the Aeroverse. For more details and to see how you can participate in this exciting news-oriented activity at AirVenture 2015, contact Jim Campbell ASAP at jim at news.net. After the break, Boeing putting out feelers for a mid-market airliner. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Boeing is studying its next commercial jetliner with a projected entry into service planned for 2025. Speaking prior to the opening of the Paris Air Show, Boeing Commercial Airplane Sales Chief John Wojcik said that the new airplane will serve the middle market segment with capabilities matched to domestic and regional routes. 
The airplane, which would not be announced before 2019, would have a range of 4,500 to 5,000 miles and carry between 220 and 280 passengers depending on the configuration. It is reported that Wojcik said that the plane is not a replacement for the 757, which Boeing stopped producing in 2005. He said this airplane is larger and flies farther than the previous airliner. Wojcik said that it has not yet been determined if the airplane would be a single or twin aisle configuration, and they are studying the detailed configuration as well as what type of production system and materials need to be used. Boeing is said to be receiving inputs from airlines on the project. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. If your plane floats, the seaplane splash-in being held at Lake Murray in South Carolina would be a great place to be on June 19th. Lake Murray has its place in history because it's one of the lakes used by Jimmy Doolittle when practicing for the Tokyo Raid. The Ultimate Victory Air Show will be held on June 20th and 21st in El Cajon, California. Formerly known as Wings Over Glassby, this air show commemorates the 70th anniversary of America's triumph in World War II. You'll see lots of warbirds in action, including the P-38 named 23 Skidoo. Now we move to the middle of the country for the Vectran Dayton Air Show, being held in Vandalia, Ohio over the weekend of June 20th and 21st. They'll be featuring the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, the Breitling Jet Team, Huey Helicopter Rides, and much more. Starting in Fredericksburg, Virginia on June 22nd is the Air Race Classic 2015. This all-female air race runs over a four-day period, and racers compete against their own handicap speed, which means that planning is as important as flying. The racers are stopping at several airports across the country. After these messages, Pratt & Whitney certifies another pure power engine. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA recently granted approval for Pratt & Whitney to add the PW1100 GJM engine that will power the Airbus A320neo aircraft to its production portfolio. The Pure Power engine family has more than 6,400 orders, including options. The NTSB makes a preliminary report of an accident that fatally injured an Alaskan pilot. The pilot was struck by the moving propellers of his airplane. The engine was running in the pilotless airplane, and the pilot was trying to prevent it from rolling. The new Bell Helicopter Training Academy in Fort Worth, Texas, has officially opened at its new location. Bell Helicopter representatives hosted the first round of pilot and maintenance training students this month. The facility features flight simulators and technology demonstrators. Garuda Indonesia intends to purchase 30 787-9 Dreamliners, as well as up to 30 737 MAX 8 airplanes. The announcement was made on Monday at the Paris Air Show. The airline currently operates more than 90 Boeing airplanes. Bombardier announced on Monday that launch operator Swiss has converted 10 of its 30 firm-ordered CS-100 aircraft 
to the larger CS-300 aircraft. The CS-100 and CS-300 aircraft have over 95% part commonality, as well as same type rating. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. Rosetta's lander Philae has woken up after seven months in hibernation on the surface of Comet 67P. The signals were received at ESA's European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt on Saturday. More than 300 data packets have been analyzed by the teams at the Lander Control Center at the German Aerospace Center. For 85 seconds, Philae spoke with its team on the ground via Rosetta in the first contact since going into hibernation in November. Scientists say it appears the satellite had awoken earlier to record data, but could not communicate that data to Earth. We have not been able to confirm that the lander's first message was the question, where am I? Now scientists are waiting for the next contact. There are still more than 8,000 data packet in Philae's mass memory, which will give the DLR team information on what happened to the lander in the past few days on the comet. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.